Hello and welcome folks to another edition of my Let's Play video game commentary video thingy bobs and I hope you guys enjoy what I have to say about Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis so without further ado let's get started. Now this is a game I've been meaning to do for quite a long time actually ever since I uh, did uh, my video game Legends video of this uh, game several years ago and um, back then I didn't really know how to do proper recordings of video games I was still starting out and stuff so uh, there's a few problems with that video you can f uh, feel free to watch it if you want to but um, hopefully this let's play will give it a much better send off because I'll get to talk about why I like it in more detail and of course it will also serve as a walkthrough for people who um, perhaps stuck on the game or perhaps you know uh, just want to see what the game was really like um, I'm recording this let's play in a slightly different fashion like to the way I usually do in the sense that it's actually a proper let's play um, I'm actually uh, playing the game and recording the commentary at the same time where I usually um, in my old, the old way I used to do let's plays was I usually um, just record the game with, with Fraps or Camtasia or whatever and do the uh, voiceover in the editing. The now I'm doing it all at the same time and because uh, it, it saves a lot more time uh, of course doing all in one go and you can separate the audio uh, in the editing. So hopefully um, you guys enjoy what I have to say. I haven't done one of these uh, a proper let's play in a very long time. Uh, I might be a bit rusty and my commentary might not be that great in the initial stages but um, hopefully I'll, it gives me a chance to improve anyway and uh, feel free to make any comments if you <laughs> feel free. <laughs> Poor Indy fall, uh, fell through the attic there. So this is the introduction uh, of the game and this is the talky version of Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. This is the DOS version uh, of the game recorded on Camtasia for those guys who are interested. Um, and I'm uh, recording this commentary using a set of Turtle Beach uh, headset. Uh, it's, it's a Modern Warfare 3 headset, I think. It's good quality, but the only problem with it is um, it doesn't come with a uh, it doesn't come with a microphone shield, unfortunately. So I had to um, borrow one from my Xbox Turtle Beach headset uh, to put on attached to the microphone because otherwise you'd be hearing all, all the time after every other um, breath I take in. So hopefully uh, it's um, sorted out the problem. You don't hear my uh, hear me breathing like a or something that breathes really loudly, <laughs> I don't know, like in, on, on the telephones and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, this is the introduction. Uh, you can skip this if you totally want to, but you don't have to. Um, this is just, this sets the stage of where Indiana Jones is trying to find uh, this artifact that his associate uh, Marcus Brody has, has found, and he stored it in the Barnett College archives, and we've got to try and find it somewhere. Again, you can skip it and press uh, escape and go text. directly to the main narrative if you want, but um, I'm not going to do that because I think it's more interesting if um, importance here. if you do the introduction. Um, uh, you, we don't actually have the dialogue box yet. Uh, we can't interact with the environment apart from clicking so far. Uh -oh. Ouch. Bookcase oh. falling on you. Poor guy. He's fell through several floors. Poor guy. Um, I th personally, I think this is my most favourite, well, I think personally, anyway, um, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis is arguably the best indie game ever made. Uh, in, in, not indie, not in, as in independent, I mean Indiana Jones game, I should say. Um, the only um, other decent Indiana Jones game that I can really think of uh, was the one on the Super Nintendo. That was brilliant as well. That was a platformer. This is a point-and-click game. Um, but I think this is the best one you can get, really. That, that, that scene scared me when I first played this several years ago. Um, poor guy's fallen through several stages of the, of the uh, college, really, getting himself bashed to bits. Um, this was released in 1992, and I don't know if I've said this, but this is the talky version of the game. Uh, they call it a talky, uh, because back then in the early 90s, it was really unusual um, uh, for, uh, in, uh, 
for games in general, especially DOS games, to have voice acting. This is one of the very first early examples uh, of games that have fully digitised voice acting. And considering it's one of the earliest games which contains the, uh, voice acting, uh, there's quite a lot of it, and it's mo for the most part it's very well acted, the, the, the character roles are sold well on you. And um, generally, the sound work and the, and the uh, audio design is generally fantastic, and because it uses uh, the iMuse system, um, I'll talk about that a little bit later on because we're getting into the um, introduction sequence. I don't really want to interrupt it. I'm back, Indy. You don't look at all well, Dr. Jones. Exploring our collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. Tell me, did you find a lock to match my key? You bet I did. Take a look. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Well, why not? It's an obvious fake. You may think so, Doctor, but I believe opening a new chapter in history. My word, India, small metal bead. Jewelry, perhaps? I still think it's a fake. Then you won't mind if I take it. Ready, Mr. Smith. Stand back, gentlemen. I hope you've got a getaway car waiting. You'll need one. Hmm. What is place? He got away. But we got his coat, Marcus. Hey, what's this? Klaus Kerner, huh? Good lord, indeed. A man some sort of agent from the Third Reich. What does the spy want with his statue? I lied, Marcus. I don't think it's a phony. I can't place the style, but it's old. Look what else our friend was carrying. An old copy of National Archaeology. And there you are in Iceland. Yeah, field supervisor for the Jastro expedition. My first real job. Who's the woman? Sophia Hapka. She was my assistant. A spoiled rich kid from Boston, rebelling against her family. But where is she now? She gave up archaeology to become a psychic. How odd. You can say that again. Indy, Kerner found you. What if he finds her? We should warn the woman. You're right. I want to know more about that statue. You know, Marcus, the coldest year of my life was the one I spent in Iceland with Sophia. So there you are, that was the uh, introduction sequence, you can tell, I, I, that's why I didn't want to interrupt because it was uh, it sets the stage of what's happening. So yeah, um, so uh, this uh, Dr. Smith has gotten away with that artifact that Marcus found and uh, we've got to try and uh, find out why the Nazi spies, uh, wants to, uh, why are they um, investigating uh, Sophia Hapgood all of a sudden, so we've got to it's try and so warn her that the Nazis are after her. But no seats, no standing room, no exception. So here, uh, we, now we've gone to uh, New York. We've got to try and uh, find out where she is. Apparently she's turned into, uh, well, she's changed profes professions now. And I she's now a well psychic, and we've got to try and get inside her show somehow. So we can't go through in the front door, of course, because like, there's no tickets left. It's all sold, sold out. So we've got to go through in the back door. Or... Uh, there's another way we can go through the fire escape as well. There's three different ways you can do it, if I remember correctly. You can talk your way through uh, to the guy. You can beat up the guy, the uh, the guard at the back of the door, or you can sneak in through the uh, fire escape. But um, let's talk to the guy. This ain't no ticket office. This ain't no ticket office. Okay. So um, it depends on you. Can, you can play the game how you want. You can. Uh, uh, you can fight this guy if you want, or you can talk your way through it. So, I think I'm gonna fight him. I think it's more interesting. Let me in, you Darwinian nightmare. Was that an insult? 
this guy's kind of slow, so uh, just keep winding him up. He's easy to um, wind up. Why should I, you fat tub of lard? Okay, here we go. We're going to try and fight this guy. We've got the health bar and the power bar at the bottom. Um, I'm, I was never really much cop at this, really. Um, the te well, the technique is you've got to get the uh, wait for your power bar to regenerate to the top so you can get more powerful hits, like can block the shots. But um, since I'm doing very bad, I had to cheat. <laughs> Um, you can press numeric zero on the uh, keyboard um, if you you know like just to throw an almighty power punch if you get if you start to struggle in those situations. It works on almost every enemy apart from one in one of the paths which I'll talk about later. So we've got through. This is the this is the uh, stage hand here, and there is Sophia in the distance, like giving a lecture. So we've got to try and um, we've got we've got to try and talk to her and like uh, warn her about the Nazis. So uh, it doesn't really matter which one you choose, uh, but um, I want a reading with Miss Hapner. So we want a reading with her. Are you crazy? During the show, write a letter. So we can't do anything at the moment. So we try and walk over there, look, and he'll just stop us. Can't go out there. Think it easy and watch the show. Here, my friends, is a phantom, as it might have appeared in its heyday. Glorious, prosperous, socially and technically advanced. Beyond our wildest dreams. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts, such as you see here. Isn't she something? She can go on for hours. Okay, so uh, if you try and keep t uh, going over there, it'll just uh, cycle through the lectures and stuff. So let's try and talk to him again. Excuse me. Shh. She's just coming to the excitement. Yeah, here's part. another part here. What befell the serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level slowly creeping higher, or the earth itself suddenly shifting? However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens. On that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Or, perhaps it was a volcanic eruption, and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts, the all-seeing Nurab Sao, is silent. I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. Yeah, um, it's it's all this stuff is based on uh, real myths and legends. Excuse the me. the what actually happened yeah, to this mythical now? island of Atlantis. Uh, I'll talk about that again. Sorry, I just um, it's kind of difficult in these little sections where there's got too much to do. Right, okay, so we got to try and bring her over and like disrupt this um, lecture she's giving. So. Um, we've got to try and like, get this stage out of the way because we've got to man these controls. So, isn't there something you'd rather, isn't be, there something doing? You'd rather be doing? Uh, what? So, we've got to try and like distract him for a few minutes. Uh, don't you ever read or don't you have any hobbies? That also works as well. Don't you ever read? Sure, it's a hobby of mine. What if I give you something to walk away? <laughs> what if I give you something to read? I might take a look. And uh, I didn't really mention this, but when I picked up that little newspaper in the uh, in the street there, I can give it um, this newspaper to this guy here. Here. Well, well, the late edition. I wonder if the Dodgers won. Watch the lights while I find out, okay? And uh, hopefully the uh, you, you might have, you might have noticed that the uh, subtitles are not quite fully aligned. Um, with what happens on screen, there's nothing really much I can do about that. Like, it's a little slow. The subtitles are a little slow with the text. Well, you know, but um, I think that's the best. 
that's the best I can get it, I'm afraid, based on like the emulators you have to use to play these old games. So okay, we got uh, it was lit up before. I did um, do it before. Okay, there we go. I've uh, got the lights green now. We've got the lever in the middle and stuff, and uh, we can actually activate this thing. All we've got to do now is push this button and interrupt the show. There it goes. And I still feel the presence of Atlantis through. Uh. May I present Nurabsal, the great Atlantean god of. of. Deceit. 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 Indiana Jones, you've got some nerve. Yeah, that's supposed to be Nurabsal, you know, that, that guy in the background there, and that's what that. Oh, ghostly great. prop was meant to represent nice. and it's just set itself on fire and burnt out. Crappy electrical lighting, I suppose. <laughs> Come on, mister. I okay, so uh, we've ready. completely interrupted the lecture and... I'd say it's about time. That's, I find it really odd. The audience hasn't stirred at all. They haven't moved and... Oh, whatever. Okay, they're not those seem bothered, oh, to be no. honest. Looks like Kerner got here first. Oh, dear. Stay put. No one here. Nor here either. Ah, but he is actually hiding in the crates there, the sneaky Nazi. What is he planning? Dr. Uberman. Fantastic news. Fritz? No, it uh, said Dr. Uberman there. That was a bit of a mistake in the subtitles there. Uh, but I'm just nitpicking there. <laughs> maybe the, the original, maybe in like a previous storyboard or something, the guy was called Fritz and they changed it. That's the second time Kerner slipped away. What does a Nazi spy want with old statues? Have you seen the newspaper? Listen to this. Germans claim victory in worldwide race to smash the uranium atom. Chief scientist Dr. Hans Uberman announced his plan to harness new sources of energy for the Third oh, Reich. That makes sense. So that's where they're trying to find uh, so. Atlantean artifacts. Uh, they're trying to um, find a new power source, essentially. So don't bear in mind this is the 1930s. Come on. So I'm back when. Um, you know, uranium That's technology and uranium power, enrichment was still in its early it's infancy, serious. and even atomic bombs are nowhere near as powerful as they are in, in like 2012 uh, onwards. Uh, but um, so they're trying to find an alternative power source by the sound of things, but like adva the advanced colony of Atlantis and trying to steal its technology. We've got to try and find. They're trying to find where it is, apparently. Yet you've been dealing goods on the black market. And uh, it artifacts turns out uh, that Sophia has been hiding yeah. artifacts and not been revealing them to the Jastro expedition that uh, both uh, Jones and Sophia worked so on several years ago. Um, Look for a small coppery bead under those clippings in my desk. So she's been like hoarding rare artifacts and not telling anyone about it. That's what quite naughty. Know? Yeah, that's illegal, by the way. Uh, for uh, if you haven't to get as, as if you haven't guessed, if you were to do what? that in um, a real archaeological dig. Watch uh, this closely. Necklace. The bead is made of auric calcum, the mystery metal first mentioned by Plato. Now I'll place it in the medallion's mouth. Mystic uh, powers hidden within that necklace. Did you see that? Yeah, creepy. Is your electric bill paid up? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not. He's still refusing to believe all this uh, spiritual mumbo jumble as he's trying to. <laughs> Don't try your psychic act on me. Suppose I gave this aura calcum business any credence, which I don't. Well, it doesn't really matter again, you can pick any one of these, it's just like uh, they give slightly different uh, responses. Uh, we have no we idea have where no to idea find where it. where to find your mythical lost city. Shh! I'm getting something. Nurab Sal speaks. He bids us find the... what? A, a book, yes. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. Yeah, that's another myth. Another um, that's actually... Um, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk about the story later on, it's just I don't have time here, unfortunately, because of the... Don't want to rant on too long. Um, 
If later authors... If Plato wrote it, later authors would have reported it. What if the Nazis well, um, found the copy? The, apparently, um, a lot, of, a lot of scholars, uh, the the lost dialogue of Plato apparently does exist in um, the story canon of this game, but um, it doesn't actually. It, it's it's apparently it, this story is based on uh, the myths and legends that surround Plato and Atlantis and stuff. So some of it is fiction, but some of it is based on real events and real theories that some scholars actually believe. Um, it is believed that 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 this book was never actually written by Plato, but it was actually supposed to be called Hermocrates if it was actually written. It's one. It's apparently uh, I think Plato started writing the book, but um, no one ever found a complete copy uh, of uh, the book, and uh, many people believe it's a hoax. You can look upon look up uh, on Wikipedia um, if you really want to find out more information about. Uh, Hermocrates and stuff. It's really interesting stuff and where they got all this uh, story canon from. So, but anyway, now we're in uh, Iceland here and uh, we've got to try and find out by going back to the old uh, Jastra expedition um, dig site, we can find any clues about where the Nazis are actually trying to, um, what they're trying to actually do. my dig site now. Go away. I thought you were digging up Norse graves in Denmark. Yeah, again, the sorry, uh, the subtitles are a little bit out of sync in places. Some, for the most part, they're they're okay though. I think it's it, again, it's due to the um, the way the game emulates the original code. Um, and I'm rec I'm recording using Camtasia, and I'm using Scum uh, Virtual Machine to play the game because I think it delivers the best results, uh, pl especially playing these old um, Indian. Um, Excuse me, uh, Fate of, oh, sorry, uh, LucasArts games, which uses the Scum engine, which is like most of the early um, point-and-click games. The vast majority of the LucasArts back catalogue uses the iMuse and the Scum virtual, the Scum engines to power the games, and uh, that's what Scum Scum VM does. It um, it basically uses really clever. Um, uh, reverse engineering to uh, play these games on modern systems. You couldn't play. You can't play games like this on Windows 7 or Mac operating system X because um, they're designed for older systems. And uh, apparently, allegedly, uh, I don't fully believe. It. I think Microsoft disabled the feature. I think it's easily playable. Um, to play these games on Windows 7 without um, using any external software, but I think Microsoft chooses not to let you. And uh, by disabling full screen mode in DOS prompt, which sucks. So you have to use software like this to get it running. So he, yeah, again, this goes back to um, appar uh, apparently this uh, researcher, uh, this uh, scholar called uh, Dr. Sternhardt, has apparently translated the lost dialogue of Plato. Uh, from somewhere uh, into English so we can understand it and I think uh, uh, according to um, Sophia it's already possible that the Nazis um, may already have a copy of the Lost Dialogue and are trying to use it to find the Lost City of Atlantis um, again um, the dialogue doesn't actually exist really uh, in this well, it, in the real world it does exist in this uh, game and you can look up articles on it if you want to read up or more about it. Plato was a, a philosopher, an ancient Greek philosopher uh, so from uh, I think it's about sure. probably about 400 BC, 300 BC, so around that time period and he was a really clever philosopher along with his associates um, what is this thing you're working on? Uh, that uh, wrote loads of different uh, uh, pieces of writing and that's a lot of it's what Western civilization is based on. So there's a little bit of trivia there for you. And he's so uh, long. He's uh, he's current. This uh, character here, uh, Bjorn Heimdall, is currently working on this uh, some sort of Atlantean artifact stuck in the ice. Can't do anything with it at the moment because like he's working on it and um, there's no way to get it out of the ice at this present stage of the game. So let's talk to Sophia and see what she Excuse says. Me. What's on your mind? I, think I, I, I do like that. That's a nice touch. I like the fact that the characters like moved out of earshot of uh, Doctor Heimdall because they both don't believe like all this supernatural stuff that he's talking about, like um, supernatural beings from other planets and stuff like that. It's, it's interesting all the same. 
But um, we've finished here. There's nothing really to look at here. And again, I can't stress an awful lot how much I really do like the music. And uh, the iMuse system is absolutely... Uh, uh, fantastic the way they've implemented the different musical scores and things um, I think uh, we've got to go to Tikal first of all if I remember correctly I played this years ago and uh, I completed one of the uh, playthroughs you can do but there's different paths that you can take on this game again I'll explain a little bit more detail uh, later on when it's more necessary this bit's quite tricky um, we've got to get this jungle rodent into this little middle path here um, I'll just I'll just explain why I'll give it context I'll go through the path myself this is the exit you gotta go through but there's a problem there's a big gigantic snake there it's a snake I hate snakes See if we can try. I'm not fooling with that snake. I'm not getting any closer to that snake. Oh, <laughs> he's gigantic like anaconda. We gotta try and get that thing out of the way. So we gotta use this jungle rodent to our advantage. Okay, so um, kind of tricky. Uh, you gotta walk next to him to get him out of the way. Let's move to this. He's not on the right path. So just keep clicking on him until he gets in the right place. Uh, put him there. No, it's kind of, it is it is rather tricky. Um, let's get him over there. I want him in the middle. Move. There we go. Uh, he's in the right place. I don't know whether I'm uh, close enough now to use the whip, though. Uh, ah, that's right. That's correct. Just to knock the road through the path. <laughs> the, 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 the anaconda constricted it and it fell down the cliff. That's what we wanted to Good do. Good old Mother Nature. Now we can go through now, and now the snake's not there. We can uh, climb this tree here. Just click use and climb over. Use it as some sort of uh, rubber tree bridge thing. That's pretty cool, like elastic band. Wow, some bridge. Hi, Indy. But Sophia, being clever as she is, she completely avoided the Whoa. jungle and found a path. How did you get over here? While you were off bushwhacking, I found a path. <laughs> Typical. Uh, let's look around. Let's look around. Okay. And uh, here is uh, appears to be a I'm Mayan temple. The genius of the Mayans. They're getting rather. Mayans are quite popular <laughs> these days with talk of Armageddon and 2012 and all that crap. Uh, don't believe it, folks. It's just a load of nonsense that like scaremongers love to push around the internet. Um, but there you go. Uh, that's where the, the um, for people who are interested, I'll just explain. It's apparently uh, the world's going to end in uh, 2012 according to the Mayan calendar uh, because it's the end. Of the calendar finishes apparently on the 23rd or 22nd of December or some crap. Uh, and stuff like that, and people are getting all uh, what can you all worked up about this Armageddon down. nonsense I've and like rapture like nonsense and all that man. stuff. So that's where it comes from, the Mayan calendar. I thought, just thought that uh, brought it up because it links oh, in. No. But anyway, um, back to the game itself. More important things instead of that nonsense. Right? Okay. Um, uh, do doctors, uh, this this guy here, uh, Doctor Sternart is the caretaker of this little establishment, he's that souvenir stand and the temple, uh, but he won't let us in uh, unless we prove uh, that we are scholarly enough, if, that, if that's a word, to let us into the temple because he doesn't left, he doesn't leave, sorry, he doesn't allow uh, normal people into the temple because they're not, uh, they don't have enough credence I suppose, that's the proper word. Can we take a look inside? How do I know that you aren't a Yes, yeah, he doesn't like tourists going around his temple. Um, this took me a while to figure out, actually. Um, uh, he's, I'm doctoring on a Jones. That's not, that doesn't really convince him. Sounds like the name of one of your states, or, or possibly a cat. Actually, it was the name of the dog. Yeah, that's a reference to uh, the movies. Yeah, it's, it's a name that was actually given to the dog, but he, he adopted it because he liked the uh, handle, I suppose. Um, I'm hoping to find some evidence of Atlantis. Let's keep here. talking and see what he says. Again, it's been years since I've played this, so 
bad. Some time. bits might prove a little tricky for me to remember, but I'll do my best. Okay, uh, I really like to explore, really the like to explore the temple. Tell me the name of the lost yeah, what is the name of the lost dialogue of Plato? It is the Hermocrates, but um, Indiana Jones doesn't know this, um, so we got to try and figure out what the title is uh, by using that little parrot over there. So we've got to say, um, I don't know the, I don't title. Know the title. Well, at least you're an honest man. So there we go. There he, go, there he goes back into the temple. So we got to uh, let's talk to this uh, parrot over here. And like, if you said those th uh, the, any of the other different examples, and you and you repeat it to the parrot, he will like for in, like um, tip a canoe. You say loads of different uh, definitions and stuff if you uh, really want to, but uh, we want to know the title of the book, so just say title. title? A, friend a friend of Socrates. There you go. Uh, we now we've got the t name of the title. Uh, we can't. Uh, that kerosene lamp will be a part of a uh, puzzle well later now. on. Let me guess. Hey. Yes. You and the little woman decided to take home that special mug, eh? About exploring the temple. Tell me the name of the lost dialogue of Plato. I could have just walked over there to get his attention, but like, I could just pick, try and pick that up. But like, he, he's always sniffing round, so... It's the Hermocrates. The Hermocrates. That's it. That's it! Oh! Well now, perhaps I was wrong. You seem to Maybe, to perhaps it should be. Again, you, you do get like occasional subtitle errors that, that I suppose like in the uh, final production some of the words weren't changed Come to reflect like changes in the script in later on or whatever. So here we go, now we're inside the temple. Uh, this is where we get to explore. Okay, there's nothing really much here apart from these spiral designs. Um, let's, let's, let's take a look at them. Um, Engraved symbols of water and life. Nothing really much here, but that one there is darker. This than the other different. ones. We More have to try GPS. and um, get that out of the wall somehow. And this, and also that's, that animal head over here looks, looks like it a part of the mode. puzzle as well. Let's talk to Sternhardt. Professor. Yes? What was the purpose of this? What was you don't the have to ask him chamber. anything really. You have me there. Some sort of crypt? It's just to... Um, Excuse me, Sophia. Uh, get a bit more uh, flavour text. What's up? But now, uh, as you may have guessed, we've got to try and, and get that okay. lamp, but like um, Sternhart, uh, like that, that uh, lantern or whatever it is, and we've got to uh, try and get access to the kerosene inside it, if I remember correctly. Now he's distracted, now we can actually go and actually pick it up without him getting annoyed at us. Ah! Right, okay, now we can pick up the, the kerosene lamp. Good thing that pest Sternhardt's not around. Okay, now we can go back to the temple. Okay. Now we we can go over Excuse here now. Me, you? Let's see what your friend is up to. Open the kerosene lamp and use the lamp with the spiral design. So you took my lamp, eh? I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> Look, the kerosene ate away the tarnish. Remarkable. Because you couldn't pick it up before, because of the way it was all gummed up before in the wall. Now we've got it, we can pick it up. Marvelous. And uh, you probably guessed, this is a pretty easy puzzle, really. It's, it's uh, easy going, just stick it the perfectly. Now it looks kind of spiral like design inside the animal head. Amazing. And it looks like an elephant now. Um, now we can uh, pull the thing like a lever Look and open that. the crypt. Astonishing. Bless my soul, the tomb of an Atlantean king! Here's a small stone disc with images of land and sea engraved on it. I do believe it's a world stone. At last I have the thing. Goodbye, fellow seekers. Wait! Oh no, he got away! There is a secret door there all the time. It won't budge. It's almost invisible. We, we, of course, we can't follow him. No, we can't, unfortunately. So we've got to go... Um, let's investigate this crypt, then. We can see a little flashing uh, uh, bead down. Let's have a look at this. Who knows? Maybe it is the tomb of an Atlantean... We don't really know who, uh, who, this, who this guy actually was. I don't but, think that'll um, work. 
There we go. That's what I was trying to do. Pick up the bead, not the two. He missed the Oricalcum bead. So yeah, we got an Oricalcum bead, the mystic metal uh, described by Plato. Um, Oricalcum. Um, is a... Uh, I don't think it actually exists. I think it's just like a metal that's referenced in a lot of old textbooks again. Um, what do we do now? But uh, no one knows where where it actually came from, but I don't think it actually exists or a calcum. It's just a made-up uh, mystic metal that was uh, it's used in a lot of old um, philosophical works and things. So, um, but I could be wrong on that. You can have a look. There's a, oh, another game. There's another... Uh, Pretty sure there's a Wikipedia page on the thing. Let's find the airport. I can't actually research everything in the game. Might be wrong on a few things. Okay. Um, now we've got to go back to Iceland first of all. I remember, we have to try and get that uh, eel figurine out of the ice now. So let's walk back to the dig site and see if Dr. Heimdall will let us actually have it, or whether he's actually finished digging it out. And oh dear, look at the poor guy. Um, he appears to have frozen solid. Man, he's frozen solid. A little too dedicated to his work, I guess. What a way to go. That's quite poor sad, man. really. <laughs> he's, he's like f completely encased in ice. Poor, poor guy. Um, kind of sad. Um, he was too dedicated to his work and like um, he died all alone. Oh, quite horrible. Um, okay, so we've got to try and get this eel figurine out of the ice. Um, let's take a look at it. It looked like a bee would fit in the eel's mouth. Perfect, because we've got this auricalcum bead here. We just use it's it in this perfectly. eel. Whoa! Look, it melted itself right out of the ice. Excellent stuff. Now we can actually pick up the eel figurine for ourselves. No, not talk to. I want to take a look at it. It's a bronze coil. Now we've got this... Um, uh, eel figurine Atlantean artifact. Now we can go to Azores because that is going to be it's going to prove very necessary. Let's head for the airport. Right, let's go back to the Azores. Uh, flying into the island like that. Um, Okay, so if I remember correctly, um, we've got to talk to Sophia, Sophia. and let he, let her yes. talk to uh, Costa. Why don't you talk to her? My pleasure. Because um, he's kind of touchy when guys try to talk to Mr. him, I suppose, Costa? like because he's he's more edgy around oh, Indy. But an attractive you know lady, uh, he'll he'll Just change his watch. mind. Well, hello, beautiful. Professor Costa, my name is Sophia Hapgood. Madam Sophia, the renowned psychic. We need your help. At your service. Okay, so now we, we've got to uh, try and find out where can we find the lost dialogue, if it really does exist. What can you tell us about Plato's lost dialogue? What do you want to know? Do you have it? Nope. Damn. Have, have you, you read, read it? it? Nope. Wrong again. Do you know what's in it? Not exactly. Can you get it for me? Sorry. Do you know where we, you can, know find where we can find it? Well now, that depends. I might trade the information for a rare Atlantean artifact, such as a certain necklace I've heard about. No, she'll never give away that necklace, and uh, it's part of the plot line later on, as we'll find out. Okay, so he, he apparently, by the sounds of things, he knows where to find a copy of it, but um, he only wants to trade information for a certain artifact, and that's where that bronze eel comes in. He's a sweet old guy. Trader. Okay, so let's talk to Indy and swap back over to him. Indy? Yes? I think you better take over. Okay, I'll give it a try. Okay, so let's open the door. Mr. Costa? Keep your shirt on! 
Be firm, but polite. I suppose you're selling something. If it's not a priceless artifact, I don't want it. Let's talk about Let's a trade. About a train. Okay, what you got? I'm offering this mysterious eel figure. You can go through the other options if you want to and get some funny dialogue and stuff like that if you want to, but uh it's not necessary. Ashkenazi. I think so. The Ashkenazi collection. You see, uh, this, this is another clever thing the developers did. It's not always in the same place every single time because um, there's about, I think there's about eight different places uh, where it could be the dialogue, the lost dialogue. Uh, but th th apparently, uh, Dr. Jones knows that uh, Barnet College owns it. Dr. Uberman, fantastic news. Corner, at last! See what Herr Jones has kindly provided? What on earth? Isn't it amazing? You fool! You come back to show me this, this, this! We have no right knickknack? Herr Doctor, I believe this knickknack, as you call it, comes from the lost city. Then we have failed! I see no evidence here of some magical metal plate or coal or a calcum! Look here, concealed in the base is a small shiny bead. And it glitters like fire, exactly as Plato described. It's my guess we found the treasure we see. I never guess! We must test! My God. Look at the amount of power that that one bead has completely fried the instruments. And the Nazis have found out that I've actually got some more calcum now, and that's not good. That gives me an idea. Suppose I place the bead inside the statue's open mouth. That thing go, that <laughs> little statue. You saw that? Think of trucks powered by these beads. Think of tanks. Think of airplanes. Use your imagination, Carter. Think big like the American. Think of bombs. Oh dear. Oh, uh, okay, so, but, uh, so they've actually found out, uh, found a source of orichalcum, that's not a good sign. Now we've got to try and, uh, try and catch up to the Nazis and find a cop, our own copy, uh, of the Lost Dialogue. So why are you dragging me in here? Plato's Lost Dialogue should be here somewhere. Need some help? <laughs> yes, play this please, it's scary. Yes, please, it's scary in here. Save the sarcasm, Jones. I'll meet you in your office. Right, okay. Um, as I was saying, um a clever thing that the, the um developers did was that it the says, dialogue is never in the same place. It's always in uh it, it changes every single time you play it, so it does add replayability to the game itself, which is really, really cool. Um, okay, let's go downstairs first of all, because I cannot remember. I know a few places where it could be, um, but I'm not 100% on that. But uh, let's go through the, the uh, paces anyway. So now we're back in this um, furnace room where we were before in the in the introduction. So we might need this, we might not, uh, but we pick it up anyway. This dirty rag. There's the furnace, and um, we've got to try and fit, we've got to try and get back up the coal chute, but. Because it's too slippery, we can't actually go up there. So um, nothing else in here apart from the furnace. We may may or may not need. So let's go upstairs this time. Right. Okay. So now we're back up here. Um, let's let's climb up there. Actually, let's, let's take a look. At it. it could be in this bookcase. I believe it's part of the old ward collection. Oh. So okay. So it's not in there. 
Um, the Ashkenazi collection, where could that be exactly? Okay, let's climb up here, use the rope. Okay, so now we're up in the attic again, we're re retracing our steps. Uh, is it over here? Look at the shelves. Looks like textiles from the Shamut collection. No, it's not the Shamut collection, but we can pick up that spearhead anyway. Um, arrowhead, sorry. Because uh, we, we, we don't have to... Because it's, it's not in the place where I thought it was, so we don't really need it, but we'll pick it up anyway. I'll show you examples of where it could be. Um, I believe it's part of the old Pierce collection. So it's not in that chest, and we can't open it because it's locked. It's locked. We've got to try and find the key to it somewhere. And, um, okay, so we've got to try and climb up there. And let's pull this totem pole. The floor isn't slippery enough. Okay, so we can't move. pull... Oh, yeah, I remember now. Uh, you can't pull that and use it as a ladder because it's not... The floor's not slippery enough. So we've got to try and find some sort of grease, I think it is, or something. Um, motor oil or something. Uh, and pull it over. Again, it's been a while since... I think I know where it is. Uh, I believe it's in the uh, Indiana Jones's office, uh, which is over there. You don't have to click the buttons like uh, the most you, like um, the most common uh, action inputs are assigned to the right click, so you can um, freeze of access. Like if it's a door, usually right click will just open it or close uh, it or whatever. So well, don't just stand there. Go find Plato's lost dialogue. So, okay, so I believe it's in here. Phew. I guess I should have cleaned it out. Open the ice box. Uh, let's pick up this little jar in here. I guess it's mayonnaise, but it looks like used motor oil. Oh, that's why I thought uh, thought it was motor oil. I guess it's mayonnaise, but it looks like used motor oil. <laughs> because it's been in there that long, it's like coagulated into work. some sort of uh, horrible mess. Um, anything up here? Anything in this chest? I can't remember. Nothing useful in here. It's just a, it's a just empty completely empty. Nothing really else in here, uh, let's have a look at the shelf. Nothing up here but a few broken pots. Broken pots, okay, nothing in here. Okay, so we go back over to the... back over to the storage part of the college, I guess it's called. Okay, now we're back over here. Uh, let's go back up to the stairs. Uh, let's look in the school desk. It's an old lecture hall desk, complete with a wad of yeah, gum. Cause they, we, yeah, because we, I just need, I, I sure is gooey. we need the gum uh, to go up, go up that uh, coal chute. Okay, uh, let's walk to the coal chute over here. It's too slippery to it's walk It's too up. slippery, unfortunately. So what we're going to have to do is use the gum with the coal the chute. Stick is on my shoes for traction. And now we what can actually know, walk the up. Gum works. Clever idea. Now we're back in this room. Uh, remember with the with the cat that uh, pushed us over, like scared us to death because. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at these cats. I believe it's part of the old Ashkenazi collection. Ashkenazi collection, yes. So it is the book. It's in one of these figurines, I believe. Look at another cat idol. It looks odd. I believe it's part of the old Ashkenazi collection. Oh, the one in the middle um, is the odd-looking one. I believe it's part of the old Ashkenazi collection. Let's pick up the middle one. It's made out of wax. It's made out of wax. Okay, so. That's the book. That's the room where the bookcase is. The old ward collection. So it won't be there. That, that and um, if it was a part of the ward collection, it would be the book that's hanging in the balance. You can't use the whip uh, on it. Uh, you have to um, open the bookcase from the top, which I'll show you how to do now. Um, so let's use the dirty rag with the arrowhead. Uh, because uh, if you try and use the arrowhead to undo the screws without it's the rag, it, 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 it hurts his hands, so he can't. Uh, yeah, he, it's that's why. That's what that rag is for. It's unscrewed. Okay. Um, 
Wish it would do it automatically instead of like clicking a little tiny little pixel in the corner of the screen, but uh, there you go. It's unscrewed. I guess it, guess it adds the anticipation. There's nothing of importance here. Yeah, okay, so it's not, it's not in that bookcase, but I'm just giving you guys examples of where it could be, uh, where it sometimes is. Okay, use the rope. Let's use the jar of mayonnaise with the totem pole. Gloopy, gloopy, gloop. Uh, pull this thing back. Pull it back again. And uh, now we can actually climb up there. Use the totem pole. Use it as like a makeshift ladder. Now we're back inside. Uh, the, I guess this is like an, uh, an attic. Um, where a lot of the old stuff is stored for lectures and things. It's really, I like this place. It's got a nice... I like the music as well, it's, it's the same as Iceland. Um, let's take a look around, I can't remember where stuff is. Um, it's a copy of an Egyptian statue of Horus. I think you do some with this candlestick, let's pick it up. It must be made out of lead. There. It's a bit too heavy I guess, um, for him to carry and we don't need it then. Let's take a look at the chest. It's full of air. Air, air full of nothing really. Uh, so let's, let's take a look at this urn. Some kind of funeral urn. I believe it's part of the old Pierce collection. Pierce collection. Okay, let's open up the urn and take a look in the ashes. Looks like someone's ashes in here. Feels like there's something loose in here. A key? A key inside, and uh, that's what we need to open that box in on the second oh, floor. Marcus. He thought this was a Maasai warrior. It's a crude copy of a Persian idol. I have to be more careful around these things. <laughs> Again, my apologies if if you can hear uh, if the um, boom boom shield on the microphone isn't Just doing its name. job uh, because it's not really meant for this uh, headset. This headset didn't come with one, which is rather stupid for the amount of money I paid for it. Uh, but there you go. Um, nothing in that chest. Nothing in the urn, uh, nothing in that bookcase over there. So um, let's go down to. Uh, it's inside this. It's this cat here, and we got to try and if we try and open it. We can't open it. it doesn't seem to open. So we got to uh, try and like. Uh, what do you do to wax to make it more malleable? Oh, of course, you heat it up. So let's use the wax cat with the furnace. The wax is melting. There's a manuscript inside. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. What an odd place for a manual to be archived. What a strange place. But maybe it was really secretive and, I don't know, maybe the Ashkenazi collection publishers or whatever wanted to hide it somewhere because it was so stupid. I, I don't know, maybe they didn't believe it. They wanted to hide it away somewhere. Um, but a really peculiar place to hide it, I would have thought. But, uh, hey, I'm, I'm not really complaining. Let's go back to the um, office. Actually, uh, I think I'll, I'll save it here. We've already done over 50 minutes. And um, thank you very much for watching part one. I hope you guys uh, join me back for part number two. Let's just save it here. Uh, I've already done some saves before, so let's call it new one. Uh, save it here. And thank you very much for uh, joining me for part one. I hope you guys join me for part number two.